Hey, it's October. Is anyone here have an update on what happened with the we're not gonna pay our student loans club? Who has student loans and is deciding what to do right now because they're due. They're now due in October. And a lot of people were like, well, I'm just never gonna pay. But now I feel like people are gonna pay. <laughs> I paid? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think not enough people are, are resisting for it to be a movement. And I do think people are gonna pay. <laughs> Which, uh, man, it's, this is all negative for economic news. That's 300 bucks out of everyone's, not everyone's, but a lot of people's uh, paychecks every month. That they can't spend on things to keep the economy going. Why would I pay? What will they do? Well, they can, I guess, garnish your wages. You can't get rid of it in a bankruptcy. Student loans are extra sticky, but I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> you don't want to pay, don't pay, bro. What I think you should do is, I think Biden could be tricked into a trade, so to speak. He seems to love ice cream and aviator sunglasses. And I think if you find him and trade him those simple cheap items, he might just knock your, because he seems to be choosing a f random groups to pay it off. Atrock, is it possible to just buy your own debt so it's cheaper than take out a loan to buy the debt? That sentence made absolutely no sense. Let me see if I can decipher it. Are you trying to say that you wanna take out a loan that has a lower payment than your current student loan interest payment, buy your whole student loan and then pay the loan? That is called refinancing. And that already exists, it's normal, except there has to be a bank that will loan you that much money at a lower interest rate than what you got. And usually student loans are pretty low. They're not that high. So I, it's doubtful you can find that, but yeah, you could you could do that. No, he means buy the debt from a collector. Oh, okay. So you mean you don't pay your debt. Okay, interesting. This happens, this happens. So here's what happens. If you are somebody that owes a lot of money to someone else and you don't pay for a long enough time, they don't wanna have to deal with hounding you down to get the money. So they'll sell the debt to a collector at like pennies on the dollar. So let's say you owe 80 grand, they will sell that to a collector for like 40 grand. And they'll be just like, we'll take 40 grand and be done with it. And then the collector will try to get the 80 to make their profit. So technically, if you were also a debt collector <laughs> with some reputability, you could not pay and then buy your own debt for cheap. That is possible. And it sounds sketchy and fraudulent, but it has been done by very wealthy people. <laughs> it has been done by very wealthy people with regards to like commercial real estate where they take out fucking massive loans, right? Let's say you take out a hundred million dollar loan to buy a huge office building. And then lo and behold, you can't fill that office building. You can't make your payments. So you default, you say, I'm not gonna pay the hundred mil. Well, what the bank can do is take the building back and then sell it to try and get their money back. The problem is no one wants to buy it. <laughs> so they could take the building back, then do an auction to sell it where you're the only bidder. So you bid for like 20 million. And then all of a sudden you've got your building back and all your debt off for 80 million off. They, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating the numbers, but that's, that is the idea. There's like the, the quote that is um, relevant is that like, if you owe the bank a million dollars, that is your problem. If you owe the bank a hundred million dollars, that is their problem. <laughs> and rich people use that all the time. Rich people abuse that. Where if they get a big enough loan, you know, the bank, if they don't get you to pay it back are really fucked. So they're like willing to give you a lot of breaks. Okay, so can you buy my debt? Yes, but I will be a ruthless collector. <laughs> In fact, I will extract uh, punitive penalties and increase your interest payments. <laughs> I'm gonna buy everyone in chat student loan debt and then hire the repo reaper to hunt you down. In 10 years, people will repo people's brain chip. Dude, there's a great movie about that. No, it's not great. I'm sorry, I take it back. Wow, <laughs> I got excited. It's actually an awful movie. There's an absolutely fucking awful movie about it called Repo Men starring Jude Law and I think Forrest Whitaker where everyone has like, a, like you know, robotic technology has gotten better at, at 3D printing like human organs. So everyone has like a, a replacement heart or a replacement lung or a replacement liver or whatever, you know? And if you don't pay your exorbitant hospital bill every month to like lease the fucking heart, they come into your house and they cut it out, <laughs> which is a horrific and cool idea for a movie in general, because it's like this dystopian idea. But like, I remember the movie being really bad. I don't remember why, but it's really bad. 
Yeah, I, I, I saw the remake. I only saw the remake. I only saw the Jude Law remake, so. I hate ads, said Aishirok. He's the kettle that used to make ads calling the... <laughs> I hate ads interrupting me. Uh, never skip an NVIDIA ad is what I say. How is this guy still an NVIDIA show after quitting? I genuinely liked the product, and because of that, because I was so into my job, I hated AMD. <laughs> So that's my only choice. You know what I'm saying? I also still own stock. I also still own stock. So it's, it's, you know, no reason not to shill. But I just don't like AMD, bro. I just think they're not just bad products, but bad people. <laughs> AMD stock paid off my student loans. Nvidia stock would have paid off your yacht, brother. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's all right. Lisa C's all right. She's all right. She's cool. Hey, big A, I get a software engineering inter Wait, sorry, what? How many of you in chat are software engineers or Software engineers in training. <laughs> I feel like, okay, you're all gonna lie. <laughs> it's so stupid. I can never do an honest poll. I feel like there's above average and I try to make fun of you a lot so that, that you guys don't get a big head. <laughs> you know, everyone, if you have a joke about software engineers, now's the time to use it. And I've known many software engineers. Twitch was mostly software engineers. I mean, Nvidia has real engineers. <laughs> There's my first joke, dude. There's software engineers and then there's real engineers who are actually smart, okay? There is a difference. There is a noticeable, noticeable difference. And most software engineers will tell you. And I've seen the difference and, you know, software engineers are nicer people. Some of the people in NVIDIA were legitimately, I think I've told this story, but I'll do a brief version because come on, you haven't heard every story, have you? Was It was my first day at NVIDIA and it was like icebreakers. It was like you have your recruitment class or whatever. And it's like a group of people that all got hired in the same day. So it's like probably, I don't know, 14 people in there. And we all get, they give us free NVIDIA shields and some free stuff. And they're like, all right, we're gonna go around and introduce ourselves or talk about something. And you have to say like a fun fact about yourself and maybe something else. And I go first, I think. I'm pretty sure I'm first, I'm like front left. And I'm the youngest person there, which, okay, make your jokes, but I, <laughs> by far, I was probably 25 at the time, 26. And I go, oh, what's up? My name's Atri, oh no, nice to you, <laughs> My name's Brandon. Uh, I'm here to work on, you know, marketing, esports. Again, this is like before I got promoted. So it was like mostly esports stuff at the beginning. And my fun fact is that, you know, I've lived in three countries and 13 states and, you know, all this stuff. And I have once competed professionally in some League of Legends tournaments or whatever. Whatever, just like fun little facts. Kind of like related to what I'm going to be doing and then also my background. That's what I thought you do. And then everyone's like, oh, hi, Brandon, whatever. And I sit down. Next guy stands up. He's a 48-year-old, very senior-looking guy, Asian guy. <laughs> who just looks intelligent. He looks very smart, right? He's got like, he's got like, he's buttoned down. He's wearing like a nice, I'm wearing like a hoodie and he's wearing like a suit, all right? And he goes, hi, my name is Doctor. And I don't remember, I don't remember his name, but whatever. Doctor something something. My fun fact is that Jensen Huang invited me personally to this job because of my PhD research on this, 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 and this. <laughs> on like quantum <laughs> fucking quantum physics and you know, it's like, <laughs> And then I'm like, all right, well, fucking cool, dipshit. <laughs> like, like that was, you know, just right after I'm done. He was right after me. I felt a little like, you know, out of place. And then the next people go and then, you know, the rest of them were more normal, but there was a lot of people who were like, again, yeah, I was the youngest person there. Almost everyone had some kind of like interesting story about what they were doing that was like real. There was a lot of very smart people is what I'm saying. And that's the first time I saw it, but then I, 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 I saw it over and over again working there for five years. That guy's probably great at parties. Well, I don't think he's, I mean, listen, I, I know you guys are kind of clowning them a little bit, but in the room, it felt like a flex. 